Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all today. How many are going to go out and picnic in the sun? No? All right. After a nap. After a nap? <laughs> Touche. Well, let's stand and have our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we have come here today to seek you. We are thankful that you sought us first. Seeking or giving, loving or finding, we are the tardy ones. You first sought us and gave to us. You loved us before we could love you. You found us before we found you. Accept, O Lord, our praise and our love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness. Therefore, you are to be feared. O oh Lord, hear our cry. God promises to hear our prayers and to never forsake us. Trust that our cries to God are heard by Him and that in the name of Jesus, reconciliation will happen. Let's take some time to cry out to God, asking for forgiveness, trusting that God is waiting to hear from you. The Lord, we, we wait, wait for you, our, our souls, souls wait, wait for you, 
and in your word we put our hope. Our souls wait for you, O Lord, more than Washington wait for the morning, more than Washington wait for the morning. O Lord, hear our prayer and forgive us our sins, for we know that in you there is mercy, in you there is hope, in you there is life. Hear our cries and grant us your grace in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have cried to the Lord, and the Lord has heard our prayers. O oh, people of God, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Though the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, and by his authority, I declare unto you the complete forgiveness of all your sins. Rejoice and be glad, for we have a God who loves us and wants to spread eternity with us. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. This reading is from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. The word of thanks be to God. Thanks. Thank you. This reading is from Psalms, Psalm 67. We'll read this responsively. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. For those of you who are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today is from John 14, starting at verse 23. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. 
Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to be with the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us complete or continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we have a twofold aspect of the Spirit's work, the Holy Spirit, presented in our text today. First, we have teaching. The death of Jesus had yet to come, and then the resurrection and the ascension. Everything that Jesus has ever spoken must be brought into proper relation with these marvelous experiences of his personal life. The Holy Spirit has to explain the sum total of the Incarnation. Secondly, we have reminding. To recollect what we know just when we want it is one of the hardest of things. What is the value of knowledge unless it can be turned into practice just at the right time? The Holy Spirit may be able to help to, with our memory far more than we think. Lord, I know I need help. Sometimes I get up in the morning and wonder where I'm at. But anyway, in our sophisticated age of scientific investigation and factual reporting, why should we take time to study the Holy Spirit? When Christ has commanded us to look on the fields that are white unto harvest, how can we justify spending time in this type of study? There's work to be done. When there are so many souls to be saved, so many lives to be salvaged, and so much work to be done, why should we take the time to study the Holy Spirit? Well, maybe the attitude that these questions express explains many of the meaningless activities and the unproductive efforts of our lives and our churches. I believe we can understand the analogy that we have sails, but we lack the wind. We have the desire, but we lack the drive, the motivation. But when we take an honest look at ourselves, at our church, our world, I believe that we see why we should take the time to study the Holy Spirit. So, why study? Because we're totally dependent upon Him. Some people think like this, when there are so many miles to be traveled, when there is so much to be done when we get there, and when we have gotten such a late start, why should we take the time to stop for gas? Well, I think the answer is rather obvious. 
we are totally dependent on the gas, as we are the Holy Spirit. Without fuel, the miles won't be traveled. We're not going anywhere. The work's not going to get done. The destination is never going to be reached. That's exactly the meaning of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, in regards to the Holy Spirit. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit for the salvation of ourselves and others. Jesus said in John 3, verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Then he said that we should not be shocked by the fact that we must be born again. Our need for forgiveness and God's power to forgive are brought together by faith. This concept can be illustrated like this. A light bulb may have all the ability to burn, but it cannot burn, though electricity runs to the switch. Nothing's going to happen until somebody throws the switch. In this analogy, faith is the switch. When faith is thrown as a switch, our need for forgiveness and God's power to forgive are brought together like electricity to the bulb. <clears throat> the power that brings them together, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Or, in the words of Jesus, we are born of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, he was simply saying that we are flesh and that our power is limited to what flesh can do. I mean, let's face it. By ourselves, we cannot do anything without being defeated and frustrated. As Christians, we know that all too well. But when the Holy Spirit is allowed entrance into our lives, the moment we accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit can do for a defeated life what we could never do for ourselves. To be born again is to be changed in such a way that can only be described as rebirth. The change comes when we allow Jesus into our hearts. Then we are forgiven of our past and armed by the Spirit for our future. We become citizens of the kingdom and children of God, and we enter into eternal life because we have been born of the Spirit. Now, we are dependent on the Holy Spirit for, the, for our growth as Christians. Paul encourages us to be confident that the Holy Spirit, who started the good work of salvation in us, will keep on performing it until the day Jesus returns. We read in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, in other words, I'm sorry, we read that in Philippians, but in other words, our growth, our sanctification, is simply the continuation with the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit did for us at the moment of salvation. It is the result of allowing the Holy Spirit freedom to appropriate salvation in all areas of our lives. Such sanctification becomes both an act and a process. It is an act in that at the moment of salvation, we enter the kingdom of God. 
It's a process in that as we grow spiritually, areas of our lives become increasingly committed to God and His will. We are also dependent on the Holy Spirit for our understanding of the Bible's message. In John 16, 13, Christ assures us that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. The Bible is not just another book, and therefore cannot be approached or understood as any other book. Actually, it's 66 books. 1,189 chapters. Over 37,000 verses. I could go on that one. It's more than words printed on the page. It is the Word of God. Therefore, to be understand, to be understood, it requires the Spirit of God. That's why each time we read the Bible, we should pray these words. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's Psalm 119. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Now I notice it reminds us that the natural man, that's key, the natural man, he can't know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. An airplane, for example, is lost in a storm, maybe seeking to find direction. All those pilots have been there. It has a good receiver. The control tower is transmitting a strong signal. But only when the pilot turns to the right frequency will he hear the signal and get back on course. We are lost and cannot find our way. We have a good mind and a keen ability to decipher God's truth. And God is transmitting His truth each and every day. The Holy Spirit tunes us to the right frequency so that we can hear the message and stay on course. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, we become like those whom Jesus described as having ears, but don't hear. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit for the ability to lead others in Christ. Actually, to lead others to Christ. Perhaps now, nowhere is this truth spelled out more clearly than in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, where Jesus said that we receive power only after the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Then and only then, he said, will we be witnesses to him wherever we go. Nothing will ever happen apart from the Holy Spirit working in us. As his witnesses, and in those with whom we share our witness. There's nothing more exciting than sharing God's love. Watch the light bulb come on. We will be nothing more than religious religion salespeople otherwise. But as we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to the right person and give us the right words to say, we will return as did the Spirit-empowered disciples, with joy, saying, as in Luke 10, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit for effective prayer. Romans chapter 8 informs us that the Holy Spirit will help us with our inability to know how to pray. Notice I said inability. When we really don't know what to pray for, or even how we should pray, the Holy Spirit 
will intercede for us. Often our desires are not what they ought to be. Or it may be that we don't express them in the right way. Or they are even misdirected. As we wait on the Lord, the Holy Spirit can come and take our desires that are too deep and too intense for us to express. He can express them in the language of God. Why study the Holy Spirit? Because God has said so much about the Holy Spirit. The second verse in our Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit as the one who moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis 1. The closing section of the Bible, Revelation 22, verse 17, speaks of the Holy Spirit as the one who invites us to come and drink the water freely. Everything that falls between Genesis 1, verse 2, and Revelation 22, verse 17, whether it be the creation story, God's working through Israel, the birth of Christ, the establishment of the church, or the glorious revelation of Christ at the end of time, all is the work of the Holy Spirit. God has much to say about the Holy Spirit, even starting with the Old Testament. This, this is funny. Not funny, interesting. The Holy Spirit is mentioned 378 times in the Old Testament. The New Testament is mentioned 335 times. A total of 713 references to the Holy Spirit in God's Word will convince us of the worthiness of our study. Why study the Holy Spirit? Because today's problems cannot be solved without the Holy Spirit. We'd like to think they can, but they can't. It is humanly impossible to convict people of sin so that they will return to Christ. Jesus recognized this and told us in John 16, 8, that the Holy Spirit would convict the world of sin. When God's Holy Spirit convicts a person of sin, that sin may be hidden to the eyes of others, but the Holy Spirit is sounding an alarm within that person. If the Holy Spirit were taken out of the world, there would be no sense of right and wrong, no conscience, no sorrows for evil done, no force to hold back Satan. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot say to a Christian, he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. You couldn't say that without the Holy Spirit. We must never forget that we do not wrestle against mere human beings, flesh and blood, but rather against the supernatural power of darkness and all kinds of wicked forces. That's from Ephesians 6. So it's nothing new. Apart from the presence of the Holy Spirit, these forces could not be restrained. There would be no hope for our world. So look to the Holy Spirit in all you do and constantly praise our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we truly live in you. We give you thanks for these gifts. These gifts which are truly from you to us and we give back to you. And we do that to praise your holy name and to keep things moving for the church and for our community. And Father, we lift these to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. good about the pandemic it gives us an opportunity first of all to wash my hands <laughs> most churches that I've been to we go from the glad handing and hey how are you etc and then we go to communion you know what I'm thinking do they wash their hands you know cover us protect us father from dirt so anyway the good news is I get to do this with alcohol <laughs> Well, on the night in which our Lord was betrayed in that upper room, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do so in the remembrance of me. At the end of our supper, at the end of his supper, he took the wine. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of this, do so in the remembrance of me. Our table is set.
First of all, Barb and Dwight, I want to thank everybody for your prayers. Dwight is doing well. I gave them both communion this past week, and he's just as honored as ever. So. <laughs> and he fell asleep while we were visiting. <laughs> Dwight did. Which is okay. He falls asleep when I'm preaching, so you know, hey. <laughs> Uh, at least they did get to enjoy the sun last week, at least for one day, and yeah, got to go outside and enjoy it. Uh, flowers today for, oh, you're going to beat me to the draw, Great. right, Debbie? <laughs> They're celebrating their 28th, 27. 20, uh, 20. <laughs> 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 312 years. <laughs> anyway, happy anniversary. Great. I like her note here. It says, loving each other and being kind to each other. That's always a good thing. That's great. Glad to hear it. Uh, another praise for it, Richard and Rayanne are finally getting on their feet away from all the ill effects of various illnesses. So, glad you're here. That's how you get volunteered to read. <laughs> what do they say about no, no, whatever goes unpunished? Good eat. So, anyway, glad to have you here. All right. Let us know. Also, Mary Vollmer is under the weather today. As you know, Larry was still recouping from his fall. He's doing okay, but he's staying taking care of Mary. So, and uh, Nancy called me this morning, and she's got a bellyache, so she stayed home, which is a good thing. Okay? Now let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we are once again in your presence, giving thanks and praise to you that we are able to be here and that you watch over us and provide all the mercy and grace that we need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayers. We lift to you the many afflictions of our world. We continue to pray for those that are being murdered and killed in the Ukraine war with Russia. We don't know what to believe as far as the reports are that are coming out. We just lift it to you because we know that you do know. So we lift it to you, Father, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayers. prayers. As we go about our day here in our communities, we still hear the sirens of the first responders going into harm's way, going in to help others as they are so well adept to do, as they help the injured, or just rescue the sick, or give a ticket to those that are going too fast. But Father, we know they're all doing their job to protect us. So we ask for you to protect them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Well, once again, we are with sad hearts to know that another pastor in Kenya has been murdered. It seems like a bit a weekly, if not daily, occurrence for those who don't believe in you and who don't accept others who believe in you. We lift their families to you and those who are at risk, which are many. We lift their protection and your mercy over them, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayers. Locally, our community suffers from disease. COVID's not done with us. We don't know if it ever will be. Many are sick. Many are getting better. Many are still struggling with the effects of having COVID. We lift all of us to you for those healing touches that you can provide. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We continue to lift our soldiers, all of those who go in harm's way, to 
rescue us, protect us, keep us safe from those who would destroy the democracy we believe in, to even destroy the religion, uh, our faith that we have in you. But with the Holy Spirit in us and you watching over us, Father, we, we can't lose because we first of all know that you're in charge. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father, we lift all these things to you, knowing that you are watching over us, protecting us, giving us that which we need, that which we pray for. And we do all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he place his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And give you his peace. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.
I'll try not to fall. Yeah, I'm going to go by, but I promise I won't touch you.